Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be all about fall and finding your style. I think fall is like the best time of year in terms of fashion. I think everybody feels that way. Summer's great because everything's light and bright and airy and you just need to like pop on shorts and a t-shirt to go outside and you're good to go. But in fall, it's just not obviously the case. You've got to bundle a little bit more. It's getting like a little bit chilly. Everything is pumpkin. I wanted to do a how to find your style mixed in with a little bit of a fall haul because like shopping is great, but fall shopping is the best. So I'm sure you know that I did at least some shopping, but if you had seen my last video, I have a rail on that wall and it's filled with like 30 plus pieces that I didn't, I didn't really realize that I had bought that much. Famous last words. The pieces that I chose, I'm so happy with and I really want to share like the core fall ones with you so that if you do have any gaps in your wardrobe or in your style, this is a way to really hone in on both and really make sure that the pieces that you do get this season are ones that are going to be perfect in your wardrobe and to help just evolve your style into what you want it to be. My first tip on how to find your style, it kind of goes along with what I'm wearing today which I will show you in, in full view in just a second. It's not to buy into the fashion rules that people say to stick by. One, wearing white after Labor Day is like the greatest time to wear white. If you're missing out on that time of the year when you're wearing your winter and your fall whites, you're already taking your style a few steps back. And to me, white is a universal, any time of the day, any time of the year kind of color. I know it's a shade, but I'm gonna call it a color. If I didn't have that as like such a staple in my wardrobe, it's such an identifier of my style is just me wearing white basically all the time, then I wouldn't have that in it. It's such an integral part of who I am and I think fashion is all about like expressing yourself in an outward way without having to say a word. And if I didn't have the option of wearing this today, then I would just be so much less myself. So wear white after Labor Day, break all the fashion rules that people say because it's just not worth sticking to. So what I'm wearing here is one of the things that I got recently. I'm gonna say that this is part of my haul of this video. It's what I've been wearing so far and I just think that a white jumpsuit is one of my style staples. I think it's great, it's just, it's so well fitting and I actually got this from a place that I brought my old clothes in to sell. So there are spots like this all around. I'm sure you can find some in your area. But if you did want to go and do that instead of throwing out some of your old clothes or even, I mean, I think donating them is great, but if you did want to try and get some money for them, then if you do go to one of these places, just check out what they have because I was definitely not expecting to get anything. Don't mind my slippers, but this is what I ended up getting and it was very, very cheap and cheerful. I think it was like $12 or something. It's an entire outfit and it's and I just love it and what I'm going to pair it with is something that I think is so 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 exciting because it was actually gifted to me so one of the things that I also mentioned in finding your style is looking at Pinterest, etc. You can also look at designers. One of my favorite designers ever is Balmain. I love them so much. I've got quite a collection of pieces. This is not Balmain, but it's very Balmain inspired and it's their classic blazer. So like I was saying, sometimes it's just not reasonable to pay full price or like $1,500 Plus, if you're getting it consigned, maybe a little bit less, but still, like, Balmain blazers are a lot. And this one, like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? This is a really, really good dupe, and I can be honest about that because I also have the real one in my closet. Well, real ones. But these buttons, yes, they're not as heavy as the original Balmain ones, but they're beautiful. They've got a really, really nice, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on this like crest on it that I think just brings a lot of detail to it that just makes it look that much more chic. I did steam this one with my like professional grade Con Air steamer, which I'll have linked down below in case you're interested in getting one because it does the trick every single time. But this blazer is just 
It's so good, it's so good. It was sent to me from a brand called Sidefeel. It's on Amazon and if you watch my channel, I'm assuming that you also watch other fashion YouTubers and Shea Whitney has also actually promoted Sidefeel. I chose everything that they sent to me and this was just one of the pieces that I thought I can't wait anymore to show this to you. It had to be the first one on the list and I'll definitely have this linked down below in case you are interested in it, especially if you're interested in the Balmain blazer look but you don't want to pay the price or you're not sure yet if it's something that you can actually see yourself getting the money's worth out of then go for one like this and it doesn't mean that it's any less fashionable just because it doesn't have the brand name if you did want to just go for it and try it on first get an idea for it see if you wear it and then buy the Balmain one I think that's an amazing way to go about doing fashion I think you need this in your wardrobe in case even with the same idea, these trousers I also just picked up. They were like $16. I got them from a resale boutique and they're Wilfred. That is an amazing price for these. They fit me like an absolute glove. I love how they're so high-waisted. I think that they just literally fit me better than any other pair of leather leggings ever have. I've just popped them on with these Zara flats that I've had literally for ages, but I want to show you another couple pieces from Sidefield because I'm telling you, if you don't already have these blazers, you're going to want to get them. They literally go with anything and yeah, I'm keeping it super basic underneath, but you could put them on top of anything. It could be a dress, it could be a skirt, it could be a pair of fall leather leggings, it could be a pair of jeans, literally anything, these blazers work with everything you could possibly imagine. So let me show you another two that I got from them. It's so good. It's so good. I love this color. It's, it's so good. This color is so good. <laughs> How many times am I going to say it? This is like a light sage green and sage green has been all the rage lately so obviously it does have the buttons on the wrist again it can be done up but even when it's loose like this it's got that sort of hourglass shape to it that just flatters every single type of body and it's just beautiful gold hardware is something that i just think makes the color of the sage pop i don't think it's coming up exactly how it is in person but you're just gonna have to take my word for it or you can look on the side feel site where they're selling this for an incredible price and you can get one yourself this is amazing for anything like a corporate setting if you did have like a work event to go to and you wanted to dress yourself up this is an insane way to do it and maybe not with the full leather trousers but maybe with them and maybe with a pair of heels instead but this is such a versatile piece it can be dressed up or down and i've got one more blazer basically the exact same just in a different color to show you but in more of a neutral this time so i've done this one up to show you exactly the cut of the blazer but i am going to describe the color because it's it's kind of hard to explain and i just want to make sure that it's coming up properly but it's like it's a medium gray with a little bit of a mauve undertone which I think is coming through more than it actually is in person let me see if this makes a difference but it's like these blazers they're so affordable they're so good I just love the color and cut of them and this will tie in very nicely to a point that I'm making coming up in this video where I'm talking about color versus neutrals but I'm telling you with these blazers you just can't go wrong with either they're so good links down below you'll thank me later numero dos use social media it's in our lives whether we like it or not but if you're on it you might as well be using it to benefit yourself there was a time when i just didn't know exactly how i wanted to present myself i was in between like do i want to go more like professional or do i want to stick to more like feminine but there are so many different ways that you can combine those or just combine different style sort of genres that you wouldn't necessarily do yourself and sometimes you just need to get the inspiration of seeing it on other people you'll still be original if you take inspiration from an exact photo that you see online and try and replicate it yourself however at the same time sometimes it is just easier to copy exactly what you see just do it just copy exactly what you see because you know you're gonna like it and you can just get pieces that exactly reflect the outfit that you saw 
saw. Sometimes on places like Like to Know It, you can find the exact pieces that people are wearing. LTK is a great place to both get inspo from and to shop from. This is not sponsored by them. I wish that it was, but you can get so much inspiration, but also get direct links to exactly what it is that you're looking at, which is awesome. It's a time saver, it's convenient, you're online shopping, you're browsing, it just, it sounds wonderful. So if that is something that you are interested in, check out Like To Know It because they are great. Now actually going to get the pieces because if you're not gonna click on a link that you find on a site, Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to walk into a store, which is where I find it's most satisfying to buy the articles of clothing that I have in my closet. But one of the biggest, I never get text messages. Hmm. One of the best things that you can do is mix vintage with trends, whatever style it is. If you wanted to go more grunge, get a really cool pair of, I don't know, cargo pants, from Zara. It's not wrong to get things from the high street or to get like some fast fashion items because you can't always get everything secondhand. Like sometimes you just can't find exactly what you need. So if you need to go to a place like Zara or H&M, H&M has like a great conscious collection, which I really, really think that you should check out if you haven't already. But if you wanted to get like a great pair of cargo pants from there, and then you go to a vintage shop or a designer consignment shop or a thrift shop and get a leather jacket for on top, you're gonna look like a million bucks and you're gonna have something super edgy that's a very, very specific style, but you'll be able to source the pieces from a few different spots. Look at celebrities and style icons. I mean, this is, this is a tip that I think probably gets mentioned a lot of the time, but you don't necessarily have to look to like Audrey Hepburn or Grace Kelly or some of like the past style icons. I mean, I think, I think it is great to take inspiration from them and especially because I am into like more of the vintage look, especially with handbags and accessories, but also with clothing. Like I've loved picking up some vintage designer pieces lately, but at the same time I'm thinking like I watch Friends I've watched Friends religiously, and I've probably watched the entire series, I don't even know, like 10 times. I've watched it a lot. But Rachel Green's style, for example, is one that is just, it's so good. It's so like American girl next door. It's very like classic and clean, but she has her own spin on every single outfit that just makes it eye-catching but understated. And I think if you were looking to have a certain style that could be described with any of those words, Rachel Green might be a good one to look at. I mean, Jennifer Aniston is gorgeous anyway and could make anything look good, but especially if you did want to like sort of hone in on that style with those sort of descriptors as the foundation of it, but you don't know exactly what pieces to choose, look at her style. So choose celebrities or Instagrammers or YouTubers. Like it doesn't matter where you're getting this from, but whoever it is that is known for their style, take inspiration from them. And again, either copy the pieces exactly or just find the nearest pieces in your wardrobe and put them together in a very similar way that that celebrity or person might have done. I'm gonna get even closer to show you this makeup because I'm not by any means, like a makeup guru. I've never studied anything. I didn't even do cosmetology in high school. But learning the basics of beauty is going to help you so much because no matter what you're wearing on your body, when you're having an in-depth conversation with somebody, you're looking at their face. They're looking at your face. You're making eye contact. They're noticing details about your face that make you you. Different things like the fact that my eyebrows are significantly darker than the color of my hair. Just the minor details that make up who you are, I think it's just so great to be able to sort of exaggerate, not even exaggerate those, but bring attention to those details that make you you by getting just the foundation, just the basics of beauty down pat. I always wanna make my skin the focal point because I haven't always had the best skin, but I've always loved my my skin color and what I've been able to do with makeup to enhance it. Bronzer, blush, a little bit of highlighter is something that I've just found makes my skin pop. And doing my eyebrows, not in a way that's super overdone like I used to. I'll see if I can insert a picture. It's really, really cringeworthy, but I'll do it anyway. 
and a nude lip and a little bit of like a smoky eye, just enough darkness to sort of make them pop with no harsh lines. That's what I do and that's basically what I do on a daily basis. Sometimes I switch it up a little bit and go more minimal. Lately I've been not doing my eyebrows, not doing any sort of eyeshadow and just doing mascara on lashes that haven't been curled and it gets a lot more of that Chanel runway look. If you don't know what I mean by that, I'm gonna insert some clips of Chanel beauty campaigns because to me that's like the essence of a good beauty routine and it has a lot to do with just doing the bare minimum but making it look so elevated without being overdone or cakey or having something that distracts from your natural beauty. So even if you're not into makeup, if you just do the bare minimum and you do the bare minimum right, it will enhance any sort of style look that you're gonna go for. As a final tip, figure out whether or not you gravitate more towards neutrals or more towards colors. Because if you can just get the color palette of the wardrobe that you want down pat, maybe you're the type of person that has fairer skin and certain like tan or nudes really, really wash you out. Because if you're getting sand colors or tans or camels, it might need to be the right shade and nothing else will do if it's going to make you look washed out. But getting the pieces that enhance, again, the beauty that is just natural, your skin color, your hair color, your eye color, color, just doing everything that you can to complement that is going to be best. And whether it's jewel tones or pastels for colors, deciding between the two of those and which looks better on you is going to make a huge difference for what pieces you choose in your wardrobe if you did want to narrow down a specific style. But on the flip side with neutrals, if you wanted to do more lights and whites and really light beiges versus blacks and charcoal grays and more chocolate browns and just more deep rich tones. If you figure out which sort of end of the spectrum you wanna go, getting into the right color family or shade family, I suppose, is gonna help you out so much to define your style because again, if you're on Pinterest and you're searching neutral outfits, that's great because you already know, okay, I'm less into color, I'm more into neutrals, but if then you can specify it more, you're gonna get a lot of results that are a lot more your style if that's what you want to go for. You don't know what you're gonna find until you start looking for it, but setting yourself up with a plan going into it is gonna just make your whole life <laughs> in figuring out your style that much easier. So thank you so much for watching this video. It was so nice to be back and filming a, like a real proper video in this space. It just feels so good to film in here. Again, you can expect a lot more consistent content. It's gonna be twice a week. I'm not gonna budge on that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stay consistent because that's my word lately is just consistent. I wanna be a lot more dedicated to the things that I'm passionate about because life is just too short. So thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing down below. I would love to see you in my next one, which will be coming out very, very shortly. See you then. Bye.